In this video, I'm gonna show you the benefits of using a switch statement over an if-else statement. I know if-else gets used so much because people think it's easier, but actually it's not. And let me show you why. On the left, I have a file which is if-else JavaScript file. On the right, I have a switch. .js file. And you can do this with any language, Python, PHP, Ruby, Java. The principles are still the same. I'm just going to use JavaScript as my example here. So on the left, and we are going to code this from scratch, so I will show you from scratch, but I quickly want to show you that the right is easier to read. Let me actually minimize the sidebar down the side, and I think the right is easier to read. And we're still getting into the basic stuff. As it gets more advanced, switch does become more simpler to understand. So I'm gonna to prove to you that they get the same result for now. So if I do node if else with no parameter, it says no match found. If I do node switch, no parameter, no match found. That's really good. They match, I'm happy, hopefully you're happy too. But also if I give it an environment variable of event type and we specify what we want it to be, say for example, pull request, and then we run the same commands again, as you can see, the output is pull request event, which we have here as a console log, we fall into the first condition. And if we do the same for the second, again, we are gonna fall into the same, the first condition, the same one, pull request event. And you can see this has an or statement, and this just has two cases. Let's start at the beginning, I wanna show you. If that sounds interesting to you, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and while you're down there, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I post a video and go live. So let's start right at the beginning. Let's Let's just grab an environment variable. This way we don't have to keep changing the hard-coded data. So let's make a constant uh, and we're going to call it event type and we will say it's coming from the process. Again, you can do this in, in, in different ways and we're going to call it event underscore type. And we'll do that for the if else as well as the switch. So we'll keep those the same. So let's do the first condition. So the first condition is if event type, thank you Copilot helping me out there, is equal to pull request, then we want to fall into this situation. We want this to happen. And if we put an if else, then we specify what the other type is. Yes, thank you very much, Copilot. And if none of them are matched, we'll go into the else. And that's optional. You don't have to have that, but it's always something good to have. In this situation, we will use it. We can do something very similar in the switch. And you might not immediately see the benefit straight away. So if we say switch event type, and we've got the curly braces, just like we have with the if else, and then you put cases. So we say if the case is pull request, then I want to do something. So in this case, console log pull request, that's fine. And then you have to put a break so it doesn't continue on to the next case. And then we can have more cases. So on the left side with if else, we have event type is equal to push. So we'll do push as well. We'll put console log push and we'll do a break. And on the left hand side, we also have the else. So kind of the default. So what we need to do is do a default. And again, we will put console log unknown event type. But you don't need a break for that because it's already at the end. So let's put the same console logs on the left hand side so it is exactly the same. So now you're looking at this and you might think, well, Eddie, it's similar ish. I'm more familiar with if else. So, you know, I'll stick to that. True, there isn't a massive amount of benefit just yet. I think there is. I still think this is more readable, but I'm going to show you in a minute how even more beneficial it is. So let's just prove it works. So the previous command we had before was event type, pull request, and then we run the if else, which is on the left hand side. So we run that and we get the pull request console log. So now if I do the same with the switch, we get the pull request. Just to prove that it's working, I will change this to push and you will see push has come through. So I could say here, maybe push event and here push event again just to prove that something a bit different happened there you can see push event has come through so they're kind of you know on par the lines of code roughly the same characters probably roughly the same this is where it gets even more interesting what happens if you want an or so you've got pull request but we also want it to say pr so we could say event type no not pull request underscore we'll just say pr so now that's looking a bit uh, harder to read and not as pretty so if we come over here what do we do well we don't do an or or anything like that we just put in another case just duplicate the line and change the string to PR. And now that is so much easier to read. So what happens if we had another one? So let's put in another one and we'll say uh, event type underscore pull request because some people might type it differently. Well, okay, that's on two lines now. It's looking a bit ugly. But on here, we'll duplicate this and just put an underscore. And now if any of these cases are matched up here, it will automatically do this console log. Let me prove it to you. So if we do the if else first and we'll do PR, so we'll say node if else and it's 
done, pull request. Let me just add event on there to just prove it to you. So if we do it again, it says pull request event, looking good. And if we do the same for the right, for the switch style, then you can see it says pull request. Oh, let's put event on there as well. Let's save that. So now you can see it says pull request event, but that's looking a lot nicer, especially when this starts to grow. I think it's a lot easier to read. I mean, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think the left is easier to read or the right is? I'd be really interested to know what you think. I noticed from my experience over the last 15 years, including myself, people are quite apprehensive to switch. I don't know why and I really like if else. However, over the years I've started to really like Switch more and more but I really just know what your thoughts are. I have some exciting videos coming out in the near future. I've got how to get into full stack web development 2022, uh, five ways how you can make money in tech as a web developer, as a freelancer, from doing things like technical writing to automated testing to coding, loads of ideas. So don't forget to subscribe below so you can find out about the awesome videos that I've got coming out soon. Let's chat in Discord between videos and live stream. Link in the description below.